Helena Ann Hiddle's Golden Loading the Cannon, hashtag 22. Now, when I think Philly art, I'll be honest, this isn't exactly what springs to mind. It's not your typical Philadelphia landscape, that's for sure. Were you picturing something more along the lines of the Schoolkill River? Maybe a nice impressionist rendition? Well, yeah, or even like one of those grand historical paintings, you know, with the Founding Fathers doing their thing. Ah, uh, see, but that's what's so great about this deep dive. You're already challenging your own assumptions about what Philly art is. And that's what Hiddle's work does too. It's abstract, it's thought provoking, it makes you work a little. Kind of like Philadelphia itself. Just when you think you've got it figured out, it throws you a curveball. Here you go. And that's what makes this city so exciting. It keeps you on your toes. Okay, so we've established Philadelphia is full of surprises. And speaking of surprises, let's talk about Marcel Duchamp's Etant Donné. Now, this piece, this piece is definitely one of those love it or hate it kind of things. It's provocative, that's for sure. And you even said it yourself in your notes. You said, art should make you feel something, even if it's uncomfortable. And let me tell you, Etan Donné definitely elicited a reaction from me. I mean, the way it's displayed, hidden away in its own little room, it's like you become part of the artwork almost. It plays with your expectations, that's for sure. Yeah. You're not just passively observing, you're actively engaging with the piece, even if you don't realize it. And that's Duchamp for you. Always the provocateur, the rule breaker. It's funny though, because in your notes, you also mentioned how much you love Impressionism, which is like the polar opposite of Duchamp. True. But don't they both reflect aspects of Philadelphia in yeah. a way? The city has this incredible range, this ability to be both edgy and elegant, traditional and avant-garde all at the same time. Okay, I see what you're saying. It's about embracing the contradictions, the unexpected juxtapositions. Exactly. And speaking of unexpected juxtapositions, let's talk about another piece you wanted to explore. Van Gogh's Sunflowers. Sunflowers. I mean, who doesn't love this painting? It's like pure joy on canvas. It's iconic, isn't it? <laughs> But you mentioned wanting to understand why it's considered a masterpiece, what makes it so special. Exactly, because at first glance, it seems so simple, right? It's just some sunflowers in a vase. Right, but like you said, there's something more to it. And I think that's where understanding Van Gogh's own life, his struggles, his intensity, that's where it all clicks into place. So you're saying there's this hidden layer, this undercurrent of emotion that elevates it beyond just a pretty picture. Absolutely. Those brush strokes, that vibrant yellow. Mm. It's like you're seeing the world through Van Gogh's eyes, experiencing his passion firsthand. Wow, I never thought of it like that. Okay, so we've got abstract cannons, mm. we've got scandalous installations, and now we've got sunflowers bursting with emotion. And we're just getting started. See, and now for something completely different, you said you wanted to really feel the weight of history. Right. It can't all be abstract concepts, right? Exactly. So let's talk about the museum's armor court. Those suits of armor. It's like stepping right into a medieval battle. I can only imagine. You know, when I was looking at the pictures, I was thinking, okay, that's pretty cool. But being there, surrounded by it. It's totally different. It's like that quote you highlighted, something about how history is more than just words on a page. This brings it to life, you know? Totally. Okay, so from abstract cannons to, well, very heavy history, what's next on our Philadelphia art adventure? Well, you mentioned the power of religious art, even if you're not particularly religious yourself. Right, right. It's about the human experience, ultimately. And I think Roger van der Weyden's Crucifixion Diptych really captures that, the raw emotion in that piece. It's intense, isn't it? Even just looking at a picture of it, you can feel the grief, the anguish. Exactly. And it makes you think, how can something created centuries ago still resonate so strongly today? It's proof that some things are timeless, you know? It's that shared human experience. No matter what your beliefs are, everyone understands those emotions. Exactly. Okay, how about we lighten the mood a bit? You're going to love this next one. Okay, good. Because I was starting to get a little, uh, you know, reflective there. I hear you. So, the Philadelphia Chippendale Room. Talk about a change of pace. Oh, yeah. I may have mentioned this, but I have a bit of a thing for antique furniture. And this room is like stepping right into an 18th century mansion. You get to see how these pieces were actually used, the craftsmanship that went into them. That's what I love about these kinds of historical rooms. It's like a time capsule of everyday life, but elevated, you know. It's designed as art, for sure. Mm. And speaking of artfully designed spaces, yeah. have you ever seen Monet's Japanese bridge in person? I haven't, but I've always loved Monet. You know, when I need a mental break, I just pull up his paintings on my phone. And this one is quintessential Monet. It's all about light, atmosphere, those fleeting moments of beauty. 
And you specifically said you wanted art that makes you feel something, right? This painting does that for you. Oh, absolutely. It's serene. It's contemplative. Like taking a deep breath of fresh air. Okay, now I really need to see it in person. Uh, you do. Yeah. Okay, from tranquility to, well, let's just say things are about to get a little less peaceful with our next piece. Oh, a little intrigue maybe? Intrigue is an understatement. Yeah. Georges de la Tour's The Cheat with the Ace of Clubs. It's like something out of a movie, you know? I actually do. You know how much I love when art can tell a story? And this one has drama, mystery, even a bit of danger. It's all there in the faces of those card players. You can practically see the wheels turning, the schemes unfolding. It's fantastic. It reminds me of that Caravaggio painting we talked about last season, that really dark background, the single source of light. You've got a good eye. Bulo Tour was definitely influenced by Caravaggio. That use of light and shadow creates such a powerful mood. And you're right, it's like a snapshot of a story. It makes you wonder what happened right before this, what happens next. Exactly, and that's the beauty of it. You get to fill in the blanks with your own imagination. Yeah. But speaking of imagination, get ready for this next one. Okay, hit me. We've gone from sunflowers to card sharks. What's next? <sighs> the Temple of Dender. Huh? An actual ancient Egyptian temple. Wait, hold up. The entire temple, like inside the museum. You read that right. Talk about an immersive experience, right? You walk into this massive hall and suddenly you're in Egypt. It's incredible. <laughs> that is wild. And that totally plays into something you said in your notes, that desire to be transported to experience something truly awe-inspiring. It's like stepping back in time. You can almost hear the echoes of those ancient rituals, you know. You're really selling me on this whole Philadelphia trip. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground here, but I know we have one more stop on our Philadelphia Museum of Art tour. We do, and it's a painting that you specifically requested. Thomas Eakin's The Gross Clinic. Not exactly your typical museum fair. Definitely not for the faint of heart, right? Mm. But I remember reading your note about it, how you were drawn to the rawness, the unflinching look at medicine in a different era. Exactly. It's a surgery in all its gory glory. Yeah. But you know what? It's also a testament to human ingenuity to the advancements we've made in medicine. And Eakins captures it all with this incredible realism. It's about embracing all aspects of the human experience, even the messy parts. Precisely. It's about looking beyond the surface, confronting the uncomfortable. And that's something I think Philadelphia does really well, don't you? It makes you think. Okay, so we've wandered the halls of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, encountered masterpieces from across time and cultures. But our deep dive into your sources isn't over yet. We still need to talk about your fascination with the Delaware River. Yeah, you know, it's funny. For a city so steeped in history, I always think of those cobblestone streets, those old houses. <laughs> but the Delaware River, that feels like a whole other side of Philadelphia. It's essential, though, isn't it? It's like the lifeblood of the city. It's what connected Philadelphia to the rest of the world, shaped its identity. You even said yourself you wanted to understand how that relationship evolved over time. Absolutely. And there's no better place to start than Penn's Landing. Right. I mean, that name just screams history. It's where it all began. Remember that quote you pulled from William Penn, something about creating a green country town? Well, Penn's Landing was his first glimpse of that dream. It's the birthplace of Philadelphia. It's funny to think about, though, because today, when we picture those early days of the city, it all seems so, I don't know, quaint. Right. But Penn's Landing was a bustling port full of activity, trade, new arrivals. It was the gateway to a new world. And it's still evolving, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not some dusty old relic of the past. It's a vibrant part of the city today. Exactly. And that's what makes it so fascinating. It's a living testament to Philadelphia's history, from those early Quaker settlements to the modern metropolis it is today. Okay, so we've talked about peaceful beginnings, but I know you wanted to explore a different side of the river's story as well. You specifically mentioned wanting to learn more about the USS New Jersey. Yeah, it's one thing to read about naval warfare, but to actually stand on the deck of a battleship. That saw action in World War II, Korea, Vietnam. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? It makes you think about all those different chapters in history, those moments of conflict and sacrifice, all playing out on those same waters. And now... That same ship is a museum, a floating reminder of those events, both the triumphs and the tragedies. It's amazing when you think about it. The same river that brought William Penn to these shores with his vision of peace and tolerance also carried these instruments of war. Talk about a study in contrast. Exactly. It goes to show you every place has its complexities, its layers. It's all about peeling back those layers to see the full picture. And sometimes those layers are connected by bridges, both literally and figuratively, right? 
Which brings us to another structure you wanted to discuss, the Ben Franklin Bridge. Oh, now that bridge is iconic. 